here on April the 20th. Michigan spring football begins here on Fox, and the opening kickoff goes rolling into the end zone. So, Alex Orji, we've heard a lot about him as a quarterback, as a beast, as a guy who can run. What do you want to watch from him today, Jake? Well, what we know already is that he's an elite athlete. We saw him in run packages last year. At one point, Jim had him as the third leading kick returner for the team, so he's a phenomenal athlete. What I want to see is the processing, the football IQ, his command of the offense. Is the ball out on time? Is he finding open receivers? And is he being smart with the football? And we're going to get a chance to see that right here as the blue team's in an empty formation. How about this? Michigan's first offensive play is no running back, at least to start, and then they adjust to figure out who they are and hand the ball off. It's Donovan Edwards getting the bulk of the carries this year with Blake Corum getting his ring and heading to the draft. Donovan Edwards told us at the facility yesterday the whole thing he tried to do last year was stay even keeled when he was getting the chance as much as he wanted to. Now it's his show. Yeah, and they're replacing a bunch of leaders on this team. Donovan Edwards has stepped up in that leadership role. The, some of the challenges he had in the early part of the season, it showed a lot about his character and how he stayed the course and really delivered with an excellent national championship game. Now he's the leader of this team. And some huge runs in that college football playoff championship. Bredesen couldn't make the catch. What are you watching, Joel, and Alex Orji here? Well, for, for Alex, here's the thing. It's, it's, a, it's about process, yes, like Jake talked about, but it's, it's also about operation. You know, in practice, you're just sitting at the same yard line and you're just having four or five plays, and then you go and you talk to your coaches, and you don't get the chance to really operate with the play clock, getting in and out of the huddle operating all the motions and everything and driving your team down the field. I want to see which quarterback can drive their team down the field. I think that's what Kurt Campbell wants to see as well. Donovan Edwards certainly helps. That's a gain of 11. And by the way, running clock and 12-minute clocks in every quarter. Well, what you see already in why that process matters is, let's just talk about the team big picture. The defense is going to be one of the best units in college football. You see Donovan Edwards breaking off a few runs early on. So they're going to be able to control the clock and play great defense. But the processing for these quarterbacks is not pressing, not trying to win the battle right now, right today. It's avoiding those mistakes, moving the chains, and all ultimately put points on the board. I'm glad you mentioned the defense. I think Charles is getting lonely down there, hearing two minutes of offense to start this game for Michigan. Alex Orji incomplete. We wanted Tyler Morris who's going to have to step up with that receiver. Here's what's interesting for me, fellas, and I'm, I'm with Coach here down here right behind the offense. Coach, you're having to replace Blake Corum, who was an incredible leader. It's not that Donovan you know, wasn't a great running back because he is and, he, and he's going to be. But what do you need out of Donovan from a leadership perspective to replace what Blake gave you? You know, really from a vocal standpoint, do what Blake did when he when it felt like it was necessary. He's starting to do that. He's been a great, tremendous leader in the spring and uh, just super excited for him and as he progresses as a leader. And he also put on a little bit of weight. I would I would assume that short yard. Blake was so good in the short yardage. What are you going to see from Seth? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to watch him. He got he got to watch one of the best, I think, in uh, college football at short yardage football. So, you know, got to watch him. He's going to try to emulate him and surpass him. But, but really, you... You just love those big guys up front getting off the ball. They're doing a nice job here early. Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves on being physical up front. Uh, that's how we're going to be built, and that's what we're going to do. Charles, this defense is going to have to get get something going because right now they're they got to get off the field here on third down, don't they? Yeah, they do. But they got the guys up front that, that can get that done. Um, Michigan, well, the, the, the blue team, they got Donovan Edwards back there, so that's the guy that they got to stop. They're not worried about the quarterback right now. He looks a little bit rushed right now well, with, with his uh, throwing the football. But our defensive line, look at them. They'll stop, they, they stop you on third down. That's what they do best. That's T.J. Guy. Nice play by T.J. Guy. That, look, the defensive line, Jake, had some guys leave, obviously, for the NFL draft, but there was a lot of depth there. A lot of guys have seen time. Yeah, the same four guys that are expected to start, Josiah Stewart, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Derek Moore. Those four guys, I love to point this out, that was the four on the field for the key fourth down stop in the Rose Bowl versus Alabama. So their starting unit, really the entire defense, will be one of the best in college football. The depth is the key. The difference between good, great, and elite teams is often depth. Especially in a possible 17-game season. Oh, nice. That one there. threaded through to Bredesen.
Jackson. What do you like, Joel? That was a really good read. So right here from behind, it's just a little stick route by the by the fullback. And he's and as soon as he turned, that ball was out, guys. So from behind the, the line of scrimmage, that was a really nice read and execution by Alex Orton. Hey Joe, that was a laser. Yeah, it was. And that's the one thing. And, and Charles, you know what's interesting? From a quarterback, and you, and you saw this on the opposite side. Quarterbacks have to understand how to change their tempo. You, know, you can't always throw it hard. That one was a nice job understanding he had to throw it in there nice and hard. But that's what I'm looking for for ten here. Can he change the style of the way he throws at times? Well, it'll be interesting to see how much he tries to use that arm and trying to fit it into tight spaces because the defense, the defense was all over that pass. Here's another good pass for him with a ball out to the flats. Uh, he's starting to move the chains a little bit. That was beautiful. It led Peyton O'Leary to yep. really good ball. I was just going to say on these past two plays, the ball placement is key. It's not yep. always just about IDing the right guy. That pass to Max Bredesen, Max Reyes, the safety, was coming on his inside shoulder. Orgy put the ball on his outside shoulder. There he has Peyton O'Leary in the flat, put it on his upfield hip so he could catch it, turn, and run. Orgy's kind of settling into the game a little bit, a little shaky at first, but he's putting together a nice drive. Kirk Campbell talked to you, Jake, yesterday about leadership and just the small things that he's going to evaluate this quarterback. Uh oh, uh oh, out, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I thought I was going to the end zone with the belt. Jo Joel, I thought I was going to the end zone with the belt, baby. <laughs> he told, okay, so right before we went on the air, Donovan Edwards um, comes boy. over and he sees the belt. And Charles the is ball. like, you get in the end zone, I'm coming down with the belt. So uh, that's what I'm watching for right here on this series. And he thought he was going to be out of the game already. He didn't go get a chance to get in the end zone. <laughs> right. But I'm right. coming with the belt. <laughs> Not too many guys catch Donovan Edwards. You, you know, once he gets out to that edge, usually it's it's good night. There's that belt. Charles, that looks good on you. We see you right down there with the belt on. Yeah, it does look good, man. When you're a champion, man, it transcends. So we don't care if it's 1997 or 2024. We champions. Let's go. Let's go. Donovan Edwards tackled by Hausman, the transfer from Nebraska. Hausman's going to be important, guys. Remember, they're trying to replace both those linebackers from last year, including Junior Colson. They played a ton of games, so Hausman's going to be important. The Maryland transfer, Jayshard Barham from uh, uh, Maryland, uh, who's going to be on the blue team. Those guys are going to have to play a huge role this year. That was a nice tackle right there. They, they're really excited about this linebacker room. They think Jay Sean Barham, I mean, wasted no time in this spring. They talk about him like he could be a first-round pick one day. I mean, he was a five-star recruit in high school, one of the better players for Maryland's defense. And even though they lose Mike Baird and Junior Colson, this linebacker room's reloaded. Orgy rolling out. Oh. Alex Orgy looking for the end zone. Get that man the belt, Blue Charles. Blue team. Blue team. We got the belt, baby. Hey, life's not so bad when you're in the national champs, huh, Jake? Hey, it ain't Absolutely bad at not. All. Look at Sharon Moore smiling. <laughs> Charles, you got down there fast. He did. Hey, he hey, was in it. Hey, if I'd have known any better, I'd say they did that for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. About six first downs on the opening Michigan drive of the quote unquote season, right? Could there have been a more Michigan drive to start our game? No, there couldn't. And really, this is exciting for this Michigan team and this staff. Great decision there by Alex Orgy. It looks like he was in an RPO with the chance to throw the football. But this is what gets you so excited about Orgy is his ability to create and do things with his legs, threaten defenses. Yeah, because uh, from, from behind here, and I was standing with Coach, and from behind, they're trying to sneak Marlon Klein out into the flat. You guys probably saw that from up top, right? He got caught up in the wash, right? So all of a sudden, Alex Orgy doesn't have his number one receiver. And guess what number two in the progression is? Run. It's his legs, and that's what he gives you. And I tell you what, trying to bring that guy down on the outside, that would be very difficult to do. He doesn't need a football to knock down bowling pins. He can do it with his body. <laughs> Sharon was pretty happy with that series, in particular those two throws. They got the 
Bredesen on that little tight end stick route. They had O'Leary out in the flat. That was a beautiful pass. He was very pleased with the way Alex handled that after the first incompletion. Well, Joe, you know, Sharon wants to be balanced on that play, on that drive. Six runs, five passes. So literally the definition of balance, 50-50 yeah. just yeah. about. So 7 nothing, the blue team. Clock is moving down to two minutes. And what a story Davis Warren is. You know, he starts to walk on. He moves to the scout team when he was in high school. He dealt with leukemia and everything that came along with that. And football has brought him so much joy. And now here he is involved in a starting quarterback battle at Michigan. And very much involved. A phenomenal young man, clearly a leader, well respected by his teammates. In this quarterback battle, each guy brings something unique. And for Davis Warren, that character and that story has allowed him to win respect of his teammates. But for him, it's the pre-snap processing and IQ. He's got great knowledge of the offense and what defenses are trying to do to stop him. So Mullins gets Hello, the first Mullen. carry. Hello, Jenny, you spent some time with Davis Warren yesterday. Well, and it was all about perspective. That's the word he kept going back to. And it really made me realize just how lucky we are all for our health and to play the game that he loves. And you mentioned, Jason, that chemo that he went through in high school. And he credits football as the way he was able to get through it, the mindset he would be able to play again. And unfortunately, once he did get healthy January 2020, the pandemic hit. So it has been a while for him, but he always believed him in himself always believed he could be the QB at Michigan and what a moment you know he's involved with local hospitals here helping young kids who are going through the same thing I just was blown away by his mindset and really by his fight and the joy that he gets out of life I mean he, he was out playing nine before he went to the facility yesterday and so he said look I've been through all of that I can handle basically anything at this point and that that's Mott's Children's Hospital and the football team a lot of the athletic teams go up there and spend time with the kids and Davis brought up a great point you know when JJ McCarthy's in the room of course the kids are going to get excited but when Davis is in the room he gets to roll up his sleeve and say hey I have the same scar as you guys and it's a different type of hope here he is on the field playing quarterback Deacon Tonelli with the catch. 35 yards. I love how he hung in the pocket there. There was a little pressure coming off of his right side. And he just sat back a little bit, even backpedaled, and then delivered a strike right down the middle. That was beautiful. Yeah, Joel, really understanding pre-snap. It was one high man, so you know. Now the Mays team was driving when we stepped aside. That schedule announcement coming in a short while here in the second quarter. And Kalel Mullings, after Donovan Edwards took the blue team down here, got the opening carry, and then Dunlap with the carry there. Hey, fellas, Zeke Berry is, is no the guy that everyone mentioned right here. Mm -hmm. You're going to need somebody to step up for Mikey Sane or still. Zeke Berry is a guy we're hearing a lot, of, a lot of people talk about. He's had a great spring. He stepped in, played a couple different roles, safety, nickel. Uh, so super excited about Zeke he's peaking at the right time yeah nice play there, there guys right on the outside what made Mikey special was his ability to be multiple he could play in the slot he could cover all across the field but then he was a great blitzer always around the ball they think Zeke Barry can do all those same things I like Jair Hill on the other side as well on the maze defense as this one gets out quickly to Colston Loveland, the returning starter at tight end for the offense. Hey Charles, how do you how do you handle these tight ends, right? Like a Colston Loveland, because he's gonna split out at number one sometimes. He can flex. I like as a corner, how do you deal with a guy that that, that is that tall and athletic? Well, a big guy like that, man, for, for, for myself, I like to get up on him because the big guys usually aren't that quick off of the line of scrimmage, so I want to be able to get hands on them. Uh, but the thing you, that you have to you guard yourself against is that they're big, long guys, and they gain separation by pushing off. By the way, two, two trick plays for everybody. I don't know if this counts. Here's Mullings again. Jake, what do you think of a corner talking about tight ends like that is my question to you. Listen, as a tight end, I, listen, Charles Charles is the GOAT, okay? So, but as <laughs> I'm a not tight trying end, to stir stuff up here. We <laughs> always have to have confidence that we're going to win. And, and you brought up a great point, though, Charles, is knowing how to use your body and your yeah. length. And I think what makes Colston elite is his football IQ and his feel. He's one of those guys that's always open. 
Yep. He rarely drops a pass. He beats man coverage and settles in the zone. He's the best tight end in college football this year. I think he could be a future first round pick. This is when he excels here when you get close to the red zone. This is when he becomes a problem. See him there tight to the formation on the left side looking that direction. There he is. It is Loveland right near the line to gain. So we talked about that's, this. That's why you got to get the DB up on these guys, yeah. man. Don't, yeah. You can't give them free release and catch a little quick out on you for the first down or, or close to the first down. Especially, Charles, when he's the guy that's back on this offense, right? Like, right. he's seen right. the most football. You do have to make life difficult on him. And exactly. think about not just what's back. All those guys that are just great out, they're all getting drafted, right? They're right. not just graduating. Those were all key contributors. Really lost six offensive linemen. They're top two receivers. So as you watch the second half of this game, Joel, there are opportunities for guys to get playing time in week eight, week nine, week 10, when you need them, when injuries start to happen. So no gain, fourth and one coming up. That was Zeke Barry with the tackle coming up in the run game. He's flying around. Again, Mikey Sainer still was that Swiss Army knife. Always seemed to be in the right place at the right time, and then he had the capability to make those plays. He's quick. He's quick. You know what I mean? Like, down here, Sainer, he's like Sainer in the backfield. was such a playmaker so for this team last year. Barry's going to have to do the same thing. I like what I'm seeing out of him right now. He's reading all the over, game well, too. Field. Yeah. Straight ahead, and he does have the first down. Doesn't that make you smile? Mixed you personnel, smile. it's no, like almost goal line football out there, fourth and one. That's Michigan football right there. Khalil Mullings, the converted linebacker, big, strong back. He'll step into a bigger role this year. You know what I want to see next year? You yeah. know what I want to see? And, and, and Sharon can hear me right now. You know what I want to see next year? I want to see those big defensive tackles in here on short yardage. Can we see that? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that too close to Mason Graham. He's going to want to do it today. We saw Kenneth Graham walk down the Penn State running back, right? So he's got the running back speed. Kenneth Grant showed up at the facility yesterday wearing a Metallica sweatshirt. That is top flight old school there, incomplete. Be fair, we said, hey, what's your favorite song? And he looked at us sheepishly, and then he was like, well, I think I've heard one of them. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that hurts my heart. He said, it's a look. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to point something out about that last play. Did you, did you see who batted it down? That's number eight, Derek Moore, who's an edge. He's a defensive end. Yep. But what's unique about this Wink Martindale defense is you think it's downhill in pressure. <laughs> and it is, but it's multifaceted in the My sense man, that Wink. pressure can come from anywhere, and even your defensive lineman can drop. So they love to confuse opposing quarterbacks. He described it almost in NBA terms, in matchup terms. And the idea is to do as much as possible with the person you have and show so many amoeba looks as there's a handoff to Mullins. We've talked about him as the OG. He said that means old grandpa. Yes. <laughs> to us. Well, it's 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 this when we talked about it in the open. How do, how do you retain the goal that nothing changes and yet everybody's different? You know, and, and that's that's a challenge. Well, one thing that you do is that you keep everything the same for the players. Okay, so even though these guys, a lot of them weren't starters, they've been in this system. They, they know and trust this system, and they've seen it work, you know, to the tune of a national championship. And so now, Wink Martindale comes in here, and to them, he's just an extension of Mike McDonald and Jesse Minter. So nothing's different for the players. Loveland on the right side of the formation, go through the progressions and dump it off. Mullen spins out of the tackle. Charles. That's what, I, hey, that's what I like right there, pursuit. Everybody to the football. That's what made us national championships last year. It, it's that team mentality. Guy, first guy gets there, gets on the tackle, doesn't make it. But here comes all 11 other guys to make the tackle, get him on the ground. When you were in pursuit like that, were you yelling, whoa, 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 whoa? <laughs> hey, when I was in pursuit, I was saying, ball, ball, ball. All I, was, all I was doing is trying to get the ball out, baby. Every chance I got. I know everybody tuned in for the field goal unit. Isn't that right? We see a rating spike. Spring football field goals. Adam Samaha on the kick. And it's worth three. Seven three blue. Stakes on the line. Winner gets stakes. Losing team gets hot dogs. Blake Corum downstairs with Jenny Tao. Well, this guy always.
always has a smile on his face. And Blake, I mean, you hear the fans celebrating you. What is it like to be back at the Big House, a place that was so special to you and obviously celebrating the championship from last season? It feels great being back, but a little weird, you know? Not having the amazing blue on, you know, not the shorter pads, the winged helmet, but it's great. It feels really good. Seeing Team 145 go at it, they're looking pretty good, so I'm expecting big things. I know you and Donovan embraced, and I know how special that relationship is, lightning and lightning. What do you expect from him stepping up without you this season? Yeah, I expect him just to do what he does. You know, now he has really, like, the platform to just go and ball out, you know, and uh, I expect really big things. He's been working really hard. It looks like he got a little bigger, put on a little weight, and uh, as a, I think we already saw, you know, he's running hard, breaking tackles. You know, I saw him, he had a little hezzy out there. I'm like, okay, Don, before the game, I was like, show me a little glimpse of what see this year. And uh, that's what he did that first drive. So I'm super excited to see him just go crazy. I know this next week is a big one for you. So when you think back on your time at Michigan, how did this place prepare you for that next level? Uh, I mean, Michigan prepares you in each and every way. Like, academically, we had the time management, right? And so that was one part. Hard work, uh, we're going to do that. You know, and then so just on and off the field, Michigan just prepared each and every one of us for the next level, whether that be the NFL, whether that be, you know, going to a Fortune 500 company, it doesn't matter. We're ready. And that's what University of Michigan does. And I really love this morning at the ceremony when you said to all these guys, hey, call me. I'm here. I'm here to help. You know, what is your message for this team and the expectations, but how you want to live on that Michigan culture? Yeah, my message to this team is just be brothers. You know, just like we did last year when, you know, people were trying to tear us apart, but we locked arms. We had a goal in mind and we finished the goal. So don't change anything. The culture is phenomenal. We love our brothers. So just do that. Work hard and just go one day at a time. Congratulations on everything you did here, Blake. I know that this is a, a group that loves you, so congrats and best of luck. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, the one thing we didn't see here in Michigan is really how well he can throw the ball, too. Uh, this is uh, the Tigers game just the other day, and this is a strike. Woo. That's a strike. Right down the middle. Even with a challenge system for the strike zone, that's a strike. They're having a good time. Mikey Seamer still was there the other day as well. But what Blake Corum's talking about, the connectivity of this team speaks to leadership. Right? Yeah, and, and with analytics, we talk about analytics and stats, but one thing that can't be quantified is leadership. And, I mean, you can just see it. He radiates leadership and that was a big piece of their winning formula going back these few years well they're not just replacing talent in production they're replacing leadership that's going to be a key formula to their success going forward new quarterback is in Jaden Davis the highly thought of freshman out of Fort Mill South Carolina in the Charlotte area so one series each for orgy and Warren yeah and, and guys with coach here when you got a new freshman in here first time in the big house what do you want to see from davis here on this series stay poised play calm just play within himself don't try to make a play just let the plays come to him cool is it to be a freshman out here playing in three right games? exactly exactly Let's see if this is his first throw and it is they get it out very quickly look at him more Okay. Like the Alabama game there. That's right. Jaden Davis is past complete. Hey, Joe, when you got into a football game, is that what you'd like? A little quick pass out to the center? 100%. Just to kind of get yourself in the rhythm? 100%. I would always ask the play caller, give me something that I have control over. You know, some sort of run pass check where I can get us in the correct play, I can see the numbers, and then I can throw the ball out there on an easy throw. And what I'd really love to do is use my cadence chart to try to see what the defense is doing. Get a, get a single safety look and then throw on free access or something like that. Free access means, yeah, cor corner has deep responsibility. You loved it, too, when the other quarterback came in for a play, didn't you? Because here's Orgy back in the game, and they'll hand it off on the end around for Morris. And we have our first marker of the day. I don't think we're going to have to introduce our officiating crew, but this is the lay of the land. Tyler Moore is really an interesting story. We'll yeah. talk about after the call here. But a young man who's going to grow into a role with Roman Wilson, Holy, and Cornelius oh, Johnson. Number 83, offense. Ten yard penalty for the spot of the foul, but still first down. Jake, you ever get a holding penalty in a spring game? The, the, it, the ref was always wrong. If that happened, no. it was always on the officials. So 
So, so, so we were talking to Tyler Morris yesterday in the cafeteria at the facility, and he said that touchdown in the Alabama game gave him so much confidence. He knew he could do it before. He knew what he was capable of. But in that moment, he felt like he grew with one catch, and it just made me think college sports is amazing, what it can do for confidence. And his roommates, you know, Will Johnson, Colston Loveland, kept playing that great, moment great, over great. and over for him. Charles, you love corners I, no, in a run I, I game, don't that. you? You know what? When I first got here to the University of Michigan, Lloyd Carr told me, he said, if you can't tackle, you can't play. Awesome. For that quarter, uh, McBurrows to come up on the edge like that, running back looked like he was going to make it around the edge, and he comes up and stops it cold. That's what the coaches want to see out of the cornerback. You know, and, and what's – that defense, we can talk all, all we want about everything that defense did, and they did a lot of great things. One of the things that they were so good at, tackling, yep. just something basic, yep. tackling. They just did not give up many yards after contact, and that was one of the reasons why they were number one in the country. Two-minute warning coming. They do get to the quarterback. You got him. You got him. TJ Guy again. The Mays team, the Mays team is turning up. The Mays team is turning up. Mays is going to take a timeout. They want that ball back. Remember now we got traditional two minute warnings like we would have in the in the uh, NFL and that's going to be coming into college football here. So Kirk Campbell who's the head coach of the uh, Mays team calls a timeout here with 209 so that he's going to get the two minute warning as well and get that ball back and try to go down and score. I want to keep talking about tackling because that's not common across college football these days. Not everyone tackles in their spring game. Not anyone not everyone tackles throughout spring. But again, when we're talking about identity, and Sharon Moore likes the word smash, that's a team-wide identity, and they embrace that. Wake Martindale said it, he didn't even need to have a conversation with these guys. They love football. They look forward to the physicality, knowing by doing it today, they'll build that callus that allows them to win games tomorrow. Absolutely. We always used to talk about the expectation is for the position. So when you come in here, you understand that you have to tackle, you have to be physical. And like you said, uh, Jake, you come here knowing, like, this is a spring game. Oh, no, we're hitting. Yeah. And, and being around this team the last three years, and I'm sure you felt this, Charles, as well. Guys, it's not just that, that we called them tough. It's not just that we, we tell, oh, they play a physical brand of football. They knew they were tougher than the opponent. And then here's the important part. The opponent knew that as well. And, and that whole mindset, that was just a, a huge key for them. And I think that that, I think that, that manifests in the spring, in the offseason, in fall, when they're hitting every single day, when they're playing nine on seven, they love it. Joe, hey, I was on the sideline, Rose Bowl against Alabama. And it was very clear who the most physical team was. And it's just carried over right now. You saw with that last tackle uh, to the spring game. Well, Sharon Moore put a stamp on that with the 32 straight runs in the Penn State game right at the end of last year in, in November into the regular season or so. And so, yeah, I mean, that's part of the DNA for him as well. All right, third down in Farmington Hills. And they'll run it with Benjamin Hall. Back, the sophomore out of the state of Georgia, Jaden Hood with the tackle. You want the big man going sideline to sideline. Yeah. You can't hurt us going sideline to sideline. All right, two-minute warning. Here is the schedule news that everybody's going crazy for after that exceptional tease at the end of the first quarter. Uh, here we go. Second time in history, Texas and Michigan getting together and big noon kickoff and big noon Saturday will be here. It's an early, massive matchup in college football. Texas and Michigan here in Ann Arbor. Joel, I know your eyes are going to the line of scrimmage in that game. Yeah, okay. Listen, there's a good chance that, and I don't want to say this too close to coach right now, but that Texas is going to have as good of an offensive line as anybody in the country. Maybe the best offensive line in the country. They're experienced. They do a lot of things well. Well, guess what? The defensive line for the Michigan Wolverines, I think that's the best defensive line in the country. You could see the 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 premier line of scrimmage battle in that Texas-Michigan game. I cannot wait to get here for that game. That's going to be an absolute... I, I tell you what, those colors are iconic. Getting them here in the big house, I, I can't wait for that game. Coach, can you, how about you? What do you think about that game? Texas, Michigan, we just announced we'll be here. Big noon Saturday. Gus and I and Jenny will be on the call. Big noon kickoff outside. 
excited. <laughs> <He's not. laughs> hey man, you're a head coach now, and you're playing. Hey, he, you're doing it well. He's already months and months ahead of us. Yes, he's yes. already calling the first yes. play. He's already ready for the game. How could you not be excited? Oh, I man. mean, two of the most historic programs in college football, two programs that are in that national title and playoff conversation already. And for Michigan fans, what, what more could you ask for? You don't have to yeah. wait until week six, seven, eight this year. You get to find out early in this season what this team is made of, yeah. what Sharon Moore as a head coach and a leader is made of. And Texas is going to start in the top five, so uh -huh. they're going to figure out, you know, exactly where they're at here with all these new faces, with all the, the change that is taking place. They're going to find out exactly where they're at. Well, and Shane, they have an answer at quarterback already. Right, like Quinn Ewers has been in that room. He knows what he's doing. So that it's an interesting contrast in week two. So here's the tale of the tape. You hear us talking about iconic programs. It's 1,900 plus wins historically. 16 national championships, 60 Hall of Famers. Charles, your thoughts on Michigan versus Texas? How do they match up, Charles? Dude, what you do you know think? what? This is this is what the people want. You know, <laughs> we always talk about we talked about Michigan's schedule last year. They said the schedule was soft, you know, up until the end. Well, this is a chance for college football teams and college football fans to give the get the, get what they want. They want the best going against the best. And so you got the Michigan Wolverines who came off a national championship, Texas who made it to the final uh, grouping, going at it early in the season. This is what college football is all about. Sure is Charles just down there cutting promos for us. Yes, that's, that's what awesome. I do. That's what I do. So Jaden Denigal is a quarterback. Now we have a two-minute drill situation you get thrust into, Jake, and we get to see how he handles this spot. That's the value of these spring games. You know, in practice you get to call plays, but in the games you get to have situations and you get to put that on tape and go back to see the operation for your quarterbacks. Denigal gets to lead this lead this maze offense. Joel, you're down there behind him. What are you watching here? Well, I want to see how quickly he can operate, right? But right there, I thought Mays made a mistake by substituting because that allows Blue to then substitute. You want to go a little bit quicker than that. But in the two-minute drill, from a quarterback standpoint, here's what you got to understand. You really only want to have a two-man progression. If you're sitting there and getting to a third man in the progression, you're, you're in all likelihood close to being sacked. And you don't want to be in that position because that's going to kill a two minute drive as quick as anything. So for me, I was always looking at primary and then get to a check down as quickly as I can. And Charles, as you know, those check downs, especially with the clock stopping after a first down in college football, they add up. You can go Absolutely. right down the field. Yeah, move the ball. And, and the thing for me is what I like about the play is on the other side of the ball, communication. Communication is key. You don't know what the offense is going to do. They're trying to sub in and out. But those guys on the other side of the ball, they were communicating and getting themselves lined up to be ready if the offense snaps the ball. Sorry, fellas. We were right next to that whistle. We got it right in your ear. No, that's great. Put your mic closer next time. Thanks. <laughs> sure, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you. The handoff to Dunlap. So third down coming up. And we'll see how both teams use their uh, timeouts here. We were talking to Wink Martindale about this and like what's the goal of the spring game he goes I wanted to win the draft so like there's a level of competition here that's probably beyond the average well we got the steaks and hot dogs right they're on the line coach right and and I, I noticed yesterday in the facility like blue and maize it was a vibe like they, there was some trash talk going on yeah it's competitive we're always competing in everything we do whether it's this whether it's classroom whether it's community service whatever we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna compete at a high level so hey, hey, people think just because you're on the same team that you don't want to smash the other team <laughs> that's right you know, that's right i remember being on this field and marcus ray who was the safety Anytime I got on offense, he was trying to take my head off. So I, anytime I lined up, I put my eyes right on Marcus Ray because I knew he was coming. So this thing is, this, it gets competitive. Yeah, just, it, Charles, if, if the quarterbacks ever go live, those defensive linemen are like, oh, oh yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. They want to they hit their own quarterback so bad. Don't do the quarterbacks like that. Not right now. Yep. Jake, you were in one of these recently. How competitive is it? 
it's competitive because it's almost more competitive because it's your buddies. You know? Oh, I get that. Right down the middle. That's, check right down. Down. Yeah, that's exactly that? what I just said, guys. Did you see it? Charles, did you see that? Primary yeah. check yep. down right yep. away. That's I Ronnie that. Bell's brother. You have here, it. So first down, clock moving. Uh -oh. False start. And that's what you want to avoid above all else, especially when you're driving. I mean, you never give a false clap in a two minute drill. I mean, I would assume you never give a false clap. No. So that's that's on the center. He's got to snap that ball. What do you mean by that for people at home, Joel? Yeah, so, th so the false clap means if, if I'm a quarterback, you've got to use your cadence or the clap to your advantage, right? So a false clap means that you're going to come up and give a clap. What you want is one defender to move because now you've unlocked the entire structure of the defense. You give the false clap, you unlock the structure, you can change the play. More importantly, you can change false the protection. Number and then you can go ahead offense. and get into your normal Find play and give the clap and snap the ball. Still but in a two-minute drill, what you don't want is that false start so you don't give the false cadence you get up clap and go and t the clock's ticking right so everybody knows it, it almost doesn't need to be said more than once in that two minute drill you want to snap the ball as quick as possible whether it's a clap clap or a uh, set hut time is of the essence Denigal quarterback clock moving a lot of checking going on before the play. Denigal feels the pressure, rolls, and he ends up out of bounds. Charles, I just love that you're living it down there. Like, you're yeah. like, oh, oh, ah. <laughs> no, I'm watching because I'm, watching I'm, I'm looking at what the quarterback's looking at. Because you give these little tails. When you're coming, you, you get antsy. And, and, and the quarterback's sitting there going through his canes, and you're like, dude, call the play so I can blitz, and so I can see the, the safety on, this, on the right side of the, uh, 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 the offense. He's itching to come, and then go pointed him out. That's a hallmark, Jake, of this Wink Martindale defense. Blitzes from everywhere. Yeah, it's a great test for these quarterbacks, too, is understanding where the pressure is coming from, what's just an illusion, what's real, and knowing where to go to the football is the, the final piece of that. Ah, now they got there, and they do blow it dead. There's a marker in two. It was Jimmy Rolder with the pressure. Looked like Evan Link, number 71, might get called for holding here. Tell you what, the officials are earning their keep in the oh, yeah. two-minute drill. Hey, there's a lot on the line. High stakes. Literally. Literally, stakes are on the line. <laughs> I always look for... Hey, dragon for, rice for the locker room, well, that's, baby. that's right. So, <laughs> this, let's get a little more technical Holy. here, right? If you're trying to uncover blitz... Ten-yard penalty, it's still... Structure, right? I keep talking about structure. Right. Charles, if I'm a quarterback, I'm always looking for two over one. Gotcha. Right. If yep. I see two pass defenders, whether yep. they're linebackers or safeties, yep. over one, yep. I know someone's coming. Scrum. Someone, yep. somebody yep. is coming. So you, you've got to figure out the tell here. So now this is what Denigal is looking at. He does not have two over one here. He's got two high safeties. Thirty-one comes down. This is not a pressure look. This is just a straight up rush. Denigal deep ball, wide open. Fred Moore. Charles, what do you got there? I felt like the defender uh, pulled off of him a little bit, Joe. You think? Yeah, I think, think, I think so. There? I think there was a miscommunication yeah. over on the outside, and they oh, let oh, somebody oh. get deep. But, but I'm going to give Denegar the credit for picking up the picking up the look and getting the ball to the open receiver. Well, take a look at this. the rush in the face. Look at this ball placement. They're running that out route in the corner underneath. And Denegal, in between that zone coverage, maybe it was Jimmy Rolder that was a little bit late getting out there, did a great job of putting that ball with the right tempo and the right pace and dropping it in to Freddie Moore. That's a guy we heard a lot about yesterday, right? Yes. Like, can Fred Moore help get some of that production out of the receiver room that they're losing? Tyler Morris is their wide receiver one based on our conversations, but they're really excited about Freddie Moore as a guy that can take the top off the defense. He's in that conversation for one of the fastest on the team. Another guy to watch is Samaj Morgan, more of a screen and gadget guy last year. He needs to take that step. Denigal drops the snap. And he is sacked, so it ends up on the ground. Zeke Jay Barry was in there first. In the Got to go. Nine seconds left. At this point, you could close your eyes and just 
bet on Zeke Barry being around the football, right? He's having a great start to this game. He's a junior out of California, that great high school program, De La Salle in Concord, California, as we do have the timeout, it looks like a field goal try is coming. Charles, is this as cold as your Purdue game in 95? Oh, man, Purdue was cold, wet, snowy, sleet, hail. We had every, we had a little bit of everything in that game. This right, this right now is like summertime compared to that game. Is it, though? Is it, though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not for, not for Joe, though. Feels like November, doesn't it? Like we're, like we're in the right place weather-wise for football season. They love it here, man. Samaha. Oh, oh no. no, no, Mays. That's a big blue half right there. It is. Hey, I didn't have to call away individual guys in a spot like this looking for playing time during the season. Yeah, well, us, us football guys, we're kind of sickos. You evaluate it because every single rep, every detail, every step you take on this field will be evaluated. You will know if it was right or wrong. And depth is a huge piece of this Michigan football team. The difference between good teams and great teams and championship teams, it actually has to do with depth. That was one of Michigan's big strengths. Well, they're losing a ton of guys to the NFL, so that's what the second half is for. A guy I liked in the first half, TJ Guy, had a nice few pressures coming off the edge. It'll be Derek Moore and Josiah Stewart first off the bench. But that defensive line, as good as they are up front, we'll be watching the depth pieces here in the second half. Bobby here, Dunlap is the tailback. Denigal to throw, and that is batted in the air, and eventually pulled in and intercepted by Kumba. Did he catch that? Emmerich Kumba I thinks I he I did. I didn't even see where the ball went. Let's watch it again. Oh, Emmerich yeah. Kumba says, that's mine. See ball, get ball, baby. It looked like it was batted at the line of scrimmage. Hey, tips and, and overthrows. Yeah, yeah, it, it was batted by Iwuna, I believe, right? It was, yeah, that was that was Iwuna, Ike Iwuna, and then Kumba, the native of France, gets a pick. That one hit the ground, fellas. Okay, so when it was initially batted, it went straight oh, down and hit the turf. False alarm. That's right. See, Charles, I got to take care of these QBs, right? <laughs> we can't just have these. Yeah, that's right. Hey, so Sharon knows. Hey, ain't ain't no, hey, there's no replays in the spring game. <laughs> I got there's no the, replays in the spring game. On the Jumbotron. I'm Kumba's protecting like, my that's guy my here. Pick, man. We got stakes on the line. We got bragging rights on the line. Hey, always hating on the defense, man, always. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it well, didn't he? He did. Good for him. So third and six after all that. the interception by Waller and it's eventually picked back up by Fred Moore. Let's, let's, you turn let's, into an offensive player, man. You got to protect the ball. Yeah, how do you have to do that, Charles? What do you got to do here? <laughs> you got to tuck it, man. You got to tuck it. You got to tuck the ball until you get into the free. And then you can put it in one hand. Hey, but give, until then, tuck the ball. And, and give credit to Wilcox there. How about him hustling back? You know, Waller's trying to head back across the field, and Wilcox, I think that was 38, right? It Guys, was. he came yep. in and punched that ball out. That's a heads-up play. Wink's got a smile on his face like, well, we had it. Sort of. That's exactly what you do after a quarterback throws the interception. You run a power play. <laughs> well, Joel. Set, settle them down, right, Joel? That's exactly right, man. That's great for the defense, right? But Denegal is very much in this quarterback competition. And we talked about the awareness and the understanding, decision-making. There you are, third down. It's early in this half. You're backed up. You don't need to make that decision. Uh, you play quarterback. How hard is it as you're in a quarterback battle to say, hey, I want to prove myself, yeah. but to be willing to throw throw the ball away. Anytime you're trying to do something outside of the system, you're going to get yourself in trouble, right? So if you're trying to prove something or you're trying to win a job on any given snap, that's not what you should be focused on. 
you really do have to be focused on just the details of the play, whatever it is. Now, that was a crossing route with three verticals on the outside. So what's your read? Is it zone? Is it man? All right, if it's zone, read your movement key. Throw it out on time. If it's not there, throw the ball away. But if you get outside of those details, Charles, that's when you get in trouble as a player. Yeah, I think so. And I think for him, for, with them getting the ball right back, he didn't have time to go on the sideline and really get down on himself. He got the ball back. It's time to just put it behind you and move on to the next play. Joel, though, what if all five guys are playing within the system? Like, what if you're trying to separate yourself? How do you do it? Play within the system. I'm telling you. But everybody you, is. I understand that, but the guy who operates the system best is going to be the quarterback. Plays will come. Here's the thing. Charles, maybe you agree or disagree. I think big plays will come to you. You can't go create those on your own. If I'm out there trying to make plays as a quarterback, I'm going to make mistakes. What I've got to do is operate the offense. Now, when something arrives, i.e., I've got a, a post route and it's quarters coverage, and now I'm alerted, and I'm like, okay, well, if the safety's down, now it's time for me to, quote, make a play by doing what? Throwing the ball on time to a spot to the post that's over that safety who's down. But if I go try to hunt for that, I'm going to make a mistake. Yeah, just put yourself in a position to make the play. There's a lot of time, man, that ball is going to come right to you just the way you said. But when you get out of position, that's when the big plays happen against your defense. Kuzdal trying to get outside, and he cannot. So the defense holds the line. D.J. Waller came up from the defensive backfield to get the stop, and he has been very impressive so far. He's flashed a few times today, and another guy that they're really excited about in that secondary. So this guy looks like an ex-wide receiver. He's six foot three, 205 pounds, playing outside on the edge. Great length. You can see his long arms there, which allows him to get up in the grill of wide receivers. But, hey, the minimum standard is to cover and, and play good right. pass defense. The great DBs are willing and capable of coming up and tackling, as we've highlighted a few times today. He did play 100 snaps last year. He got a little time. Charles, you're with Wink Martindale, your former guy, right? Yeah, this is Wink. Man, me and Wink go way back long time ago. Wink, tell me something, man. It's been 20 years since you've been on the college sideline. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, football's football, you know yeah. that. But I'm having so much fun with all these, with all these guys, and and I'm, I'm telling you, this game's just as close to the league as, as anything the way it is today, you know. All right. So tell me, tell me how it's been, you know, being in the locker room and, and talking to these guys, and they, they play with it within this system, but now they're listening to you. Tell me how the feedback's been from the young guys. It's been great. It's been great, and they have some good ideas too. You know, I'll roll with a good idea. So they have some ideas of what you know they've done before, and. and uh, you know, we'll go with that. And, but uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun all spring. Uh, obviously, we can't, we're not going to show everything. Show everything today. We're a lot of fun. Today's scrimmage, the spring game, what have you seen from the team so far that you like it? I just love the effort. And, and these guys love to play football. I mean, it's, it's, that's the thing that's it's been that way all spring. They love to practice. They don't flinch. They're just ready to roll, and, and they know what they're chasing. Man. Like I said, my man, man, me and we can go back 20 years with, with, with Rob Ryan. Good to see you here, man, in amazing blue. Love you, man. All right, Wink. Another reason he's smiling. Remember, Wink came from the NFL. They don't yeah. hit or tackle all spring OTAs. You only get 16 padded practices all season. He, he said he's had a smile on his face all spring, getting to see physical padded practices and hits and tackles. Yeah, the NFL, you don't hit anymore. I could have played 25 years, man, if I played in today's <laughs> NFL. You played a long time. You I had a very that. nice career I, for yourself. I, I, I played 18. I could have played a lot longer. I believe that. There's no doubt you could have played longer. Hey, Joel, if I played quarterback, I probably could would never stop playing. You could play 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't get touched. So that last play, guys, Nichols, 33. This is good-looking freshman. You know, he's just getting here, just figuring it out, learning college football. And when I'm watching a young guy, those guys that can learn how to play fast, right? Their normal speed. So they're not playing as, as thinking and then they're just reacting and playing fast. That's what he's doing. Hey guys, this is a fourth and seven. It is after the great play by the freshman out of Frederick, Maryland. Pressure coming again. Oh. I was about to say, <laughs> man, we thinking you got most. 
but he dropped it. He almost wow. did. Jair wow. Hill got the coverage. That was a great throw by the young freshman, though, Joe. It was a great throw. Better coverage, though. Better coverage. I loved how the, the uh, Davis there, the freshman, when he left the pocket, he kept his eyes down the field. You could tell right away he wanted to throw that ball. Now, part of that is fourth down, but another part of that is just trying to make a play. So we'll take a look at this because he was looking out to his left. Look at 83 there on the hash, the tight end, Zach Marshall. He had him, and he pumped early. It looked like he wanted to get that ball out. Maybe Marshall didn't get his eyes around, but a little bit of a missed opportunity maybe as Marshall was wide open and a near catch by Peyton O'Leary. You should see Jake lay in the talk back button when there's an open tight end that somebody misses. Of course. Oh, that's not by me. Why did he throw it to the tight end there? <laughs> They're always open too. That's the thing. Is that how he sounds, Joel? I, mean, well, I don't know, Jason. <laughs> Delighted to have you. First down for the Mays team. Here is Dunlap on the run. How about Wink Martin? He uh, starts out as a, as a keyboard teacher in high school. Like intro to typing is what he starts as. Then he ends up a defensive coordinator in Macomb, Illinois, in Western Illinois. And then he's the father of this defensive style. How about that career? Yeah, he told us, you know, his dream was to be a high school teacher and, and just coach football, right? Yeah. And I think that says a lot about his character because he embraces the art of teaching. Teaching. Of course, as you mentioned there, Jason, the Baltimore Ravens. Michigan owes hey, a fellas, lot to we, that Baltimore we got a reverse Ravens team. Here coming from the Mays team. We got what a we reverse got, coming up. We got a reverse coming up. Okay. You ready? We'll be ready. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. Fred Moore. Are you calling it the oh, first down? Oh, it's a first down. Is that 15? That might have been a little late. I came over here on the maze side. Look, they're, they're asking for a flag right now. They're Charles, asking. is that 15 or not? Hey, that might be 15, but that's the play right there where the defender told him earlier in the week, man, I'm coming to get you. Trust me. Fellas, I'm here with the new offensive coordinator, Kirk Campbell. And, and Kirk, first of all, how excited are you to take over this role as OC? Uh, it's really, really cool experience. You know, you have a school mm -hmm. like University of Michigan, be able to the offensive coordinator, you know, with the foundation laid by Coach Moore, uh, it's an honor, um, and I'm excited uh, to be part of that and keep the, keep the tradition rolling. I've been talking about all day, you know, how, how do you keep everything the same, and yet everybody is different, you know, because that's kind of how it is in particular on offense, 10 new starters, yeah, and new quarterback. How do you maintain the philosophy and the smash mouth football of what you guys were from an identity perspective? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of easy. That's who Michigan football is, right? We're going to run the football. Um, we're going to be physical at the line of scrimmage, dominate the line of scrimmage. Um, but you got to complement it with your playmakers. You know, we have Colston Loveland, Samaj Morgan, to name a few. Uh, Tyler Morris, really good football player. Donovan Edwards, Kalel Mullins. We got to get the we got the, the ball in their hands. So uh, the system is built that you can do it multiple ways, and we just got to make sure that's my job that that they touch the football enough in a game plan and um, they're about to go up there. Now you're also the quarterback coach, so you're going to be in the room with those guys. How have you felt like they've played here so far today? All these guys trying to stand out. You know, obviously we had that one turnover play. You know, we, we want to keep that off the board. But other than that, they made some plays. You know, some big third down conversions. Um, you know, Davis Warren hit one early. Alex Orgy with a touchdown run. Jaden Davis, the young bucks, did a nice job on the scramble over there. I thought he gave his receiver a shot. Although Jake Butt said the tight end was open. Shocking. Jake Butt says the tight end is open. Hey, listen, as a quarterback coach. Tight ends are always in our office are typically always open, so I'm not going to uh, disagree with Jake. I'm sure he was, but um, still nice to see the young guy keep the play alive and get, give this receiver a chance down the field. Great. Thanks, thanks a lot for agreeing with Jake there. Joel, that real helps quick, me out. Real yeah. quick, they've yeah. called nine straight runs since the interception. Is that with intent? Oh, yeah, we've been tracking nine straight runs after that interception. Is that – should we be reading into that? Uh, no, no, not at all. Are you going to get to 32? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I assume that Coach Bell is going to probably get a pass off the sheet here. Uh, but it was working you know we're moving the football uh, sustaining the drive here just trying to keep the, the other offense off the field I appreciate your time man thank you Joel, if anyone asks me why I believe in Kirk Campbell that's why because that? you throw it to the tight ends oh, they're always yeah. open yeah 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 it's awesome it, it is it is an impressive room though we've talked about Loveland Marlon Klein is getting a lot of love in that facility as well the tight end out of Germany that look Joel they dialed up a pass and it almost went the other way. He stopped running on the on the shallow. They weren't on the same page there, Kendrick Bell. And Denegal. 
How long does it take to get in sync receiver quarterback? Well, there's again, there's rules and structure to the offense, but the key is being on the same page, and that's the challenge with the turnover on the roster and with the quarterback competition is you aren't able to build that chemistry as much as if you were already the starter. That time Kendrick Bell was trying to sit down in zone. I don't think he gave clear indicators to his quarterback in a near interception there to Denegal. Watch. Play play here. Yeah. That's a delay right there. No, nope. oh, he put it away. Oh, that's it. Oh, I, I do want to ask you, Jake, yeah. when you say signals to the quarterback, indicators to the quarterback, what is that? On a shallow, there's a simple rule, and we like to use rhymes. If you're looking, you're booking. Meaning, if you're looking and you have eye contact with the quarterback, he should expect you to stay on the move. Otherwise, you don't look at the, if it's zone and you're going to sit down, you look at the place you're going to sit down. Once you sit, then you give the quarterback eyes. You want those key indicators so it's a clear picture for your quarterback. Yeah, if I see your numbers, I expect you to sit down. If I don't see your numbers, you better yes. keep running. Take O'Leary back to receive the punt. 22 seconds to go, a defense filled third quarter and Joel we talked about it the last couple of days this is a wide open totally new coaching staff yeah it is although everybody's basically been promoted from within and or has history within that structure and that philosophy so again everything is different and nothing has changed that's kind of the theme that I've been hitting on all day long I think what's in, in interesting guys if I was just to draw your attention to one of those hires Tony Alford yeah, running yeah. back coach comes from Ohio State over here to Michigan I think that rose a lot of eyebrows around the country when that happened a few weeks ago the other one that was not on the list because it's not part of the official positional coaching staff is Ben Herbert going to Los Angeles with Jim Harbaugh and Justin Tress taking over and that fits your theme as well Joel because they were basically joined at the hip in terms of strength and conditioning. When you think about the change in Michigan football you have to acknowledge Ben Herbert's role in that Jim Harbaugh said he was the most important coach on his staff the strength group developed this team. Three quarters deep, we've had some great fun here in Ann Arbor. 7-3, the blue team with the lead. 12 minutes to go when we come back. You saw Donovan Edwards with that big run in that series. Here is Henry Donahue. Edwards is out of the ball game after an early series, and he's with Kenny Tucker. And let me be honest, Jason, it's been hard to grab Donovan Edwards. He has been coaching up his guys. Look, I know leadership has been such an important role for you this season. How impressed have you been with all these guys stepping up into their new roles? Oh, I love it. Um, and the thing with this culture is it's not a monarch system, it's a democracy. So, you know, there's a lot of guys, uh, you know, like Chris Jenkins, Blake, um, Zach Keys, Mikey, Mike B, um, how they were all captains in. Now it has to be a new uh, emergence of captains in. There's no doubt in my mind that, that guys are going to step into the role that, you know, they were maybe once saying that they're going to be able to look forward to. So, uh, um, okay, okay. My bad. Sorry, guys. But I'm, re I'm really excited for the future of this program. Um, I feel like the way that the way that we prepare is going to continue to uh, allow us to be successful, and it all starts with the you know like the the coaching, but then it's really on the players. So uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we will be successful in you know finding our leaders. You know who's going to be able to stand out. So I'm really excited for this upcoming season. You mentioned the coaching. Tell me about Tony Alford, new to this group, and I know you guys had a relationship before he got here. What has he been like? How has he kind of adjusted to the role? You know what? Uh, you know, Coach Alford, he, uh, I, I'm not going to say anything on TV, but I can get from jokes outside of this, right? But I, I love Coach Alford to death. Um, when he came in here, the guys, all of us just like respected him immediately, right? And he's told us so many times, you know, how much he loved us and how great it has been um, embracing him and being open arms for him. And, you know, um, he tells us all the time, like how, how great of an opportunity that we have being here. But um, I just feel like he's elevating our game to a level that, 
has um, is just going to make us continue to be better football players and, and as well better men. So I'm beyond grateful to have him here. Um, I, I've, I've always loved him uh, in the recruiting process. He recruited me, uh, you know, going to my, uh, coming out of my sophomore year. Uh, so you know, it's amazing for him to be here because I always wanted him to coach me at some point in my in my football career. What was it like? I gotta ask. Opening those rings today and, and just seeing all of those rings there are really the accomplishments from last season. Absolutely. It's a it's a it's definitely a testament to our hard work. But uh me personally like I'm not I haven't put my rings on since twenty twenty one when we went out for his Big Ten championship. My uh, my mindset is the next the next the next rings are the best rings. So you know these ones are great they're in the past but why not go why not go achieve more? Why not go get more? I love that. I, I know the fans will love that. Thank you so much, Donovan. And go back to coaching. I know you're busy. I've kept you for too long. You have kept me a little too long. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate you talking to me. All right, talk to you soon. Get back there. He might try to get back in the game. Alex Orgy's back in the game for this series. But uh, I will say, Henry Donahue a couple plays ago had a nasty blitz pickup. That's a big piece of the running back room, and, and it's the standard here, too. I mean, Blake Corum was one of the best pass-protecting running backs in college football. Donovan can do some of those things. Of course, Khalil Mullings, a converted linebacker. But especially in the spring when you're playing that Wink Martindale scheme, and he's going to bring pressure from all over. That's where the running backs have to step up to give their quarterbacks time. By the way, it is great to see, and thanks to Jenny for grabbing Donovan Edwards, it's uh, great to see him happy and thriving and a guy that's going to try to pick up the slack for what they lost, obviously, with Blake Corum, et cetera. Uh, speaking of that team from last year, the quarterback is with Joel Klatt. That's right, J.J. McCarthy, 27 and one as a starter here at Michigan. What what does it mean to you to leave a legacy with a national championship undefeated season? Uh, it means everything because that's what you set out for when you first step on campus, no matter where you're at. But you know that 27 wins, that's not me. That's everybody around and all the coaches, all the support staff. I came in at a great time and had a hell of a time doing it. Yes, sir. Yeah, you guys, your performance and particular in the Rose Bowl late. Can you walk us through, if you're looking back, yeah. what was said on the sideline before that two-minute series? You guys are down seven. You got to go down there and, and get a touchdown to tie the game up. What was said? This is it, boys. You know, everything that we worked for to get to this point where we could show with the, you know, as the offense throughout the year, we had so many games where defense was killing it, Blake and Donna were killing it. And we didn't have that drive that was like, we're going to be a great offense this year. So that was just the message was, this is it. You know, backs against the wall, let's see what we can do. How about putting on those rings today? The four rings that you guys got to put on. Oh, yeah. It was just, you know, that jewelry is just different. Whatever it touches your hands, you see it out of the box. But it's time to get the real diamonds oh. now. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> That's right. Good luck next weekend, man. All right. We're all looking forward to that. Yeah, you bet, guys. Joel, how about this? And thanks to JJ for spending the time. We have both starting quarterbacks for these teams back in for a 15-minute fourth quarter. What do you make of that, Joel? Love it. I mean, I always wanted to get out there and play. I love seeing these guys. You always want more reps. There's a blitz coming from the corner again. Wink Martindale. Blitz City. Well, you pointed out Henry Donahue for the blue offense last drive. This was the exact same blitz from the blue defense. This time, Tavier Dunlap was in it running back. And he got to it late, but you have to be very sure of yourself. And running back pass pro, they hit you quick. You got to get over there and, and stone the rusher. You say stone the rusher? Uh, a lot of stones there. Yeah, a lot. Quite a few. Inset. Good to see uh, Dave Abloff getting some face time as well. Hardest working man in the business. Take care of your sports info, people. <laughs> Second down for Davis Warren, who has worked from walk-on to scout team player. He'll hand it off for Dunlap, and a big gash, and Mays is moving it now. It's a gain of 16. We talk about position battles. Well, it's Donovan Edwards, and it's Khalil Mullings. That running back three spot is up for grabs. And for Coach Alford, he was asked about the position battle at RB3. And actually, Tavier Dunlap was the first name out of his mouth. A guy that's been in the program for a few years, has waited his turn, always hardworking. He's had a few spring games throughout his career. And now on this drive, he's broken off two really long runs, aside from the running back pass protection. Really good drive. 11 carries, 58 yards so far for Dunlap. Mays looking for its first touchdown. Davis Warren, the quarterback, off play action, setting to throw. He'll launch 
It's a deep ball for the end zone. Oh, right there, Kendrick Bell, touchdown. <laughs> Ronnie Bell's brother gets a score. Yeah, well, it starts with the protection up front. You're running the ball, you get into play action, and Davis Warren has a completely clean pocket. They told us to keep an eye out for number 12, Kendrick Bell. As you said, he's Ronnie Bell's younger brother. He's a sophomore right now, but they said as he matures and as he learns to play at this college level, he's a guy that can grow into a bigger role. Great protection. Davis Warren says, if you give me time, I'm going to deliver the ball, and Kendrick Bell finishes it with the touchdown. Guys, he threw that a long way. Normally, you throw a go route, it's going to be thrown about 40 42 maybe 45 yards in the air I believe based on where he he let go of that ball he was at the 50 he threw that ball 55 yards that was a strong throw from Davis Warren and Joel he put air under it too it yeah. wasn't it wasn't like he was pressing to throw a dart he put enough air on it so Kendrick Bell could adjust to the ball and come down with it the, the key to the deep ball is timing I know that, that does it everyone thinks it's just arm strength or touch or everything it's not it's actually timing if you are late at all you take one extra hitch, you pat the ball one extra time, that ball is going to be short. You've got to get the ball out on time, and he did that, and then he gave it enough air for Bell to run underneath it. That was the best throw of the day so far. Pre-snap, pre just, just take a look at how much grass and space there is. So Kendrick Bell is facing off coverage. There is about 10 yards of space for Joshua Nichols, the cornerback there, and yet he just, you talk about receivers, you want to eat up that space, take big strides, get right up in the DB's grill, and then separate late. That's exactly what Kendrick Bell did right there. And where's the, uh... It's part of the evaluation process, right? I mean, they're trying to decide on a quarterback here. You saw Davis Warren go right to Kendrick Bell and tell him whatever he told him, helmet to helmet there. And this is this is what we talked about the second half of the spring game is there's guys that are proven and then there's guys that are competing for opportunities. Kendrick Bell is one of those guys. That's a pretty good sales pitch to say, coach, I want some targets this fall. Look, if you're going to go 15 and 0 and force your head coach to get a tattoo, you have to have somebody That's win exactly this job, right. Jenny. All right, so I got some hard-hitting journalism for you, Jason. <laughs> now, there was always a rumor that Coach Harbaugh was maybe going to get that tattoo, that 15 and 0 tattoo with the M. I can confirm today. He has the tattoo. I actually just cut up with Roman Wilson and J.J. McCarthy, who were in the room. They said Coach Harbaugh was confident with the choice where he wanted that tattoo, the size. And it was also Braden McGregor's tattoo artist, local guy who came in to uh, give Coach Harbaugh that tattoo. And I keep telling everyone, I can't believe he actually did it. J.J. McCarthy said, Jenny, he's a man of his word. <laughs> Jake, what do you as you watch Jim Harbaugh get a tattoo, what's the first thing on your mind? It just puts a smile on my face because, yeah, that is the question. Like, is he really going to do it? But yes, he will. Jim Harbaugh is one of one. He doesn't speak softly. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. I mean, the big smile. How about for Stephen Bateman, the, the tattoo? You get to tattoo Coach Harbaugh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's good for business is what they say. Hey, can you believe Jim got a Harbaugh? All right, I'm sorry. Jim Harbaugh got a tattoo. Yeah, he told us he was going to. He looked, man of his word. Yeah, he's a man of his word. So, yeah, uh, I saw the pictures of it before the broadcast, and uh, it looks good. He looks yoked, too. Looks like he looks good. He looks yoked? Yeah, he looks yoked. He's been working out. I know he's in there with the Chargers, with her. So, I know he's in there doing his thing in the weight room, too. So, he's had, he's had plenty of time because he was living in an RV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's coach, man. I mean, he loves he loves his RV. It's the best, man. And uh, it's a cool looking RV too. So looks comfortable. Uh, coach, who has stood out so far today for you guys? Just any group player, anybody? I mean, everybody. Uh, like what Jake Berry did early in the game, made some big plays. I thought Donovan ran well. You know, Mason Kenneth made some plays. Ernest, Jay Sean. But it's cool to watch these young backs, young linemen go in there and compete. Great throw by uh, Davis Warren to Kendrick Bell right there, younger brother of Ronnie Bell with the, with the Niners. So it's been good. And Orr just done a great job too. It's been a good day so far from field level. I can tell you that, guys. Is, is you, Jake, you, what do you got here? Yeah, look at this replay. Cole Sullivan, the freshman linebacker, they say you can hear football. Look at the left guard. Bang. Oof. That's. I mean, he's 215 pounds coming downhill. I believe that was Amir Herring. 
who is 300 pounds and put him on his butt. That's a great physical play by the linebacker. And the freshman from Pittsburgh Central Catholic High School. It's Benjamin Hall who really is a bowling ball. The celebration we saw at the uh, beginning of the game befits him. He's 5'11", 234 out of North Cobb High School. I do want to know, Charles Woodson. Charles, you with us? Would Lloyd Carr have gotten that tattoo? I think Charles is hobnobbing. He's politicking, right? He's, he's, making, he's, he's making the push yeah. for mayor of Ann Arbor. Yeah, he's over there. He's talking to JJ. I think he's gonna wants to talk to Will. He's just, you know, he's chatting it up. By the way, I don't know if even these guys know what a legacy they're they're gonna leave. Like Charles was talking to us earlier about just like what it means to him and what it means to come back as a Michigan champion. He knows from '97. And now those guys enter that phrase. Mays gets a huge stop. Yeah, McBurrows was in there first. It looked like Sullivan got in there. That's Cole Sullivan with the play again. Nice drive just in that linebacker position. And, you know, that's the value of having big defensive linemen is there's no one to block Sullivan. So he gets in the backfield. He's first to the action. And then they get to celebrate there in the backfield. Joel, you were saying, I mean, it's it's life changing, right? To be a, a national champion. Well, and, and you know, Charles has said, listen, that's that lives on forever, and that's a legacy that will continue to live on forever. And, and you know, these guys, JJ McCarthy, Blake Corum, all of these guys, they're they're always going to be able to come back here. Charles Woodson, you have a Super Bowl ring, you got a gold jacket, and yet you come back here, and he's still Heisman Trophy winner, national champion at the University of Michigan. Comes a maze team one more time. They're going to run it. This is a run heavy fourth quarter to prepare for those Big Ten games in an expanded Big Ten, by the way, right? You have you have Washington coming in, who Michigan beat in the title game. You have Oregon coming in, a top five, top ten program for next year as well. This is a deeper Big Ten and a more difficult gauntlet this year. And that's again where the depth comes significantly into play. You know, last year they were able to rotate guys, get experience. Their starters were fresh late into the season, and as they made that push to the 15-0 national championship, you open with Texas, you open conference play with USC. It's an expanded playoff, so there's a lot more games, which puts an even further premium on depth and keeping guys healthy and fresh. Penalty flag, false start penalty coming. We, it, it feels like we're a while away, but it's only four months away from the opener. They play a very proud program in Fresno State on August the 31st. Then Big Noon will be here September the 7th. Gus, Joel, Jenny will have the call. And then late in the year, that Oregon game, November the 2nd, that is going to be a mammoth. Yeah. Yeah. Oregon, Ohio State, two loaded rosters. Want to point out USC. I guess Caleb Williams is gone, but they still have Miller Moss. And the defensive coordinator, De'Anton Lynn, comes from this same lineage. He helped UCLA have a phenomenal defense the past few seasons. So they'll be much improved. On the wall, that throw is right on target on the run for Fred Moore. Into space he goes. Down the sideline and oh, no. in. Oh, no. The main team is turned up. <laughs> Fellas, they got a good blitz pickup. Who's for 41? Who, who's my guy 41 with a great? Who is it? Cuzdal. There we go. He he picked up the blitz coming from the field side and allowed Davis Warren to slide over. Now all of a sudden he finds a receiver and then Morris. And as soon as he caught the ball, Sharon's back here and he's like, he's fast. He's fast. And sure enough, house the call. turned on the wheels. That's how you get labeled as a weapon, not just a wide receiver. Yeah, take it, take a dump off and yeah. go the distance. Exactly. What up, man? How you doing, man? Where to come up on that edge, man? You know, you're a weapon when we say we're gonna put the ball in your hands and then you do the rest. And they told us the first thing they told us about Frederick Moore is his speed. Think he might be the fastest guy on the team. You saw it there as he outran the entire blue defense. It'll be nice for whoever's quarterback for these guys. We've seen Tyler Morris grow. We talked about Colston Loveland. 
Saw Kendrick Bell score a touchdown, and that time Frederick Moore making his presence felt. Really fast guy. Joel, you were talking about this before the game, right? It, yes, it's important to evaluate everything that happens over the course of spring practice, but when somebody has a moment like that in live play, it's hard to look away and not maybe even overvalue that. Now Joel's talking to everybody. Car uh, Charles is talking. I'm, I'm sorry, Jason. I didn't, I didn't catch that. No, you were just talking to all of Charles' friends. I get it. <laughs> I get what's happening down there. I was just saying, when somebody has a moment like that, man, you, you can't look away, right? Even if yeah. all of spring practice is one thing, but live game, that matters. Yeah, uh, well, that's 100%. And, and every young player that goes on to have success at some point has a splash play in practice or scrimmage. And, and that's where you earn the trust of your teammates. See, it's one thing to do it in front of the fans, but what, what you understand as a player is that the first thing you've got to do is impress your teammates. You've got to be reliable, you've got to be trustworthy, and then you've got to make plays, and, and in particular on the outside. And that's exactly what a day like today is all about. So now Alex Orji back out to play quarterback once again. So the quarterback ones for both teams are playing these final couple of drives. Zach Marshall makes the catch. Whoever the quarterback will be will see a different landscape in the Big Ten. So you add the four teams on the West Coast, all very storied programs, some great years last year. It's going to be hard for the middle of the Big Ten. Absolutely. Another key you mentioned is there's no more East and West. That's right, right? Yeah, they're they're protected rivalries. So Michigan, of course, will play Ohio State and Michigan State every single year. They got both Oregon and Washington. They got USC on the schedule. So there's it's there's never going to be a season. I, I really don't think a season like last year will be likely going forward where you feel you won't be tested until the back okay. third of your schedule. schedule. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of competition year in year get, out get now real. across the conference. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I also think about the eclectic nature of the Pac-12 and what that was from a schematic standpoint. You know, and, and how Michigan will line up against that. See the philosophy and the mentality which has worked so well here in the Big Ten, you know, how that operates against some of these West Coast teams. Joel Marlon Klein just took a big hit yeah, there. He, he had the last two catches, and this is a guy, if you asked us, whose name did we hear most yesterday around the facility? By volume, it would be this young tight end from Germany. Yeah, I mean, seriously, both coordinators mentioned him. A, a number of the teammates said this is a guy to watch. A 10-800 guy. They think he's in the top three, four, five fastest guys on this team, and, and he's pretty new to football. He was a yep. soccer player growing up, so he's still learning the craft. Uh, Kirk Campbell said he believes Colston Loveland's the best tight end this year. He'll be first round. They said Marlon Klein can do the exact same thing. Really high praise. That's a very tough throw into double coverage for Marshall. Well, so that was an example just to change gears here for a second. Yep. We talked about the ability to, to change your pitch selection as a quarterback, right? That was one you can't throw a fastball. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to layer that ball over the defender who's in a trail position and give a little bit of touch to your tight end there who's trying to go down the seam. Marshall's trying to get down the seam. That's what I think Alex Orgy is going to have to learn is, is how to change his, his pitch selection and not always throw the fastball. You know, Joel, that's what J.J. did to progress as a quarterback as well, year over year. Orgy rolling out. He wants the first down. Let's see where they're spotted here. It's going to be two yards short. So, Jake, you know this very well. Mm -hmm. There's some very significant stuff at stake. Literally. Literally. Stakes. Stakes. And then the loser gets hot dogs and beans. Is we call it beans and weenies growing up. You did. Yeah, yeah. Is that for one day or is it like? No, I think it's a team dinner setting so that you kind of get that extra sting as everybody gets in their, their line to, to get their plate. The winning team gets a nice filet mignon, maybe a ribeye with some potatoes. And then the losing team, they got to go scoop with a little ladle uh, some, some hot dogs and beans. And then as we all know, the offensive linemen, they go back for seconds and get both. <laughs> That's right. There's a good 
touch pass. That's now what you're we're talking, talking about, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Charles, do you see that little touch? I saw so, the little touch, man. We talked about it earlier. The first drive seemed a little jittery, but that little pass right there, you got to get the ball to, 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 to your receiver. But sometimes you got to lay it up there softly for him to make it a catchable ball. That was a great pass. Think of it this way. As a quarterback, I always felt like – Baseball in my pass. See, that's a fastball. You throw it with good velocity, you drive it out to the outside. But as a quarterback, I always felt, Charles, that throwing the football was more like shooting a basketball than it was throwing a baseball. And the reason was is because you've got to throw with touch most of the time. So it's more about how it comes off of those fingertips like shooting a free throw. That's a solo oh. boy. Hey, what, what about that though? Taking sacks, Joe. You can't take a sack, Joe. No, you can't do that. Are we okay with Tayshawn Bennett? I mean, he kind of couldn't get out of the way, right? Some contact on the quarterback. He'll be talked to. He'll be talked to later. He, he, he'll be fine. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, the, play, the, players, the players make money now. They can get fined. Yeah, that's right. If they got a little in their pocket, <laughs> then we're gonna put some of that in exactly. The pocket. Yeah, look. It, it looked like there was some traffic. You see, a couple guys ended up on their backs down there they were running that little game and then and then Bennett just kind of maybe lost his footing I guess but you don't want to touch your yeah, potential uh, starting that's quarterback. Why I was going to get him. No you don't but I will say like when you're in a football facility there are fans here you kind of go into in the game mode oh yeah. right yeah that's true I think exactly. Leorch is all good off. so you can He's move all on. Good. All right so guess what's coming up Big noon kickoff, big noon Saturday, all here is September 7th of this year. The Texas Longhorns, the Michigan Wolverines, couple of college football playoff teams from last year, and some very clever play callers in this game as well. We saw what Sark did to Alabama, Joel, early in the year last year yeah. to really redirect yeah, Alabama's nice. season. That's a tough get in week two for Michigan. Yeah, uh, listen, Sark's going to be ready, and he didn't just do that last year. I mean, it was the year prior. Yeah. Remember, Quinn got knocked out of that game. They had Alabama's on, on the ropes. Bryce Young basically put a cape on his back in order for the Tide to win that game in Austin. Then he goes to Tuscaloosa, and they were able to beat the Tide last year. I do think it's, it's interesting. And, and last year, even in a 14 playoff, both of those teams went. The 12-team expanded playoff, you know, I think it's just going to be interesting to see a game like that when both teams have playoffs at playoff aspirations and very likely regardless of outcome will go to the playoff you know so it's just a fascinating new era at least from my perspective in the sport how many losses can you have Joel, you think I think if you're in the Big Ten or the SEC you could probably get away with three. Uh, just depends on who they are too and, and making sure that you have a quality win here or there but if you're not in one of those two conferences I do not see you getting into the playoff with two or more losses and, and that's the strength of schedule what you're alluding to is last year because Michigan wasn't playing a ton of ranked teams or playoff contenders their margin for error was so thin but now you might have two or three losses but you'll still have four or five ranked wins so how we evaluate resumes will change we're all going to have to kind of recalibrate as we march toward November of this coming year. Orgy throws right over the middle. That's a first down right on target again. This is Dale Chesson, J.U. Chesson's brother for a first down. I like how he's just taking, taking what they give him. You love a check down more than life itself. And I told you talked about it last week. Love the check down. There it is. Get in there. Side swipe and Klein, who's back in the game. Good to see Marlon Klein back in the game. And we hit the two minute warning at 17 to 7. Charles Woodson is with one of the best corners in the land, Will Johnson. Charles? I think Will would say he's the best corner in the game. I, I think. Is that what you would say? Well, I got a lot of work to do. I, I, I didn't want to put him on the spot. I, he's being modest right now. But hey, man, last year, there's a lot of guys on this team that came back to, get to, to, to have a chance to win a national championship. Really, at what point during last season did you say, you know what, we have the team that can go out there and get it done? I think we believed it all, all summer, all year, really working up to the, to the season. But. I think through the middle of the year with all the adversity we had, the Penn State game, not having coach, first of game, not having coach, it really just kept building up and we just figured it out throughout the season. Tell me what that feeling was like uh, down there in Houston, man, when the clock strikes zero and you guys are all celebrating out there on the field and you know you're national champions. Tell me what that feeling was like. 
it was an amazing feeling. Like, that's what you dream of as a kid, you know? So just being able to do it with the group of guys we had last year and all everything we went through, all the success we had, it just was everything we, we worked for. So you're considered, if not one, if not two, three, whatever it is, best corners in all of college football right now. How, coming off a national championship, how does Will Johnson get better? Uh, I think just having the same mindset I had every year. Just uh, like you said, all the hype, all that, not really feeding into that, not really looking at all that. Just worried about working, uh, doing the next day, the next stand in the moment, and just working. That's all I've been worried about. And then what about the, your teammates? You know, you, you lose some guys. Um, big loss this year, uh, Rod going down with the ACL, but you got some other, some other guys that you're working with. Tell me about the group and, and how fun it's been working with those guys trying to prepare for, prepare for this next season. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, all spring, we had a lot of young guys that have stepped up, even guys that haven't played much that uh, unfortunately Rod got injured, but guys like Zeke Berry and guys like that that have been really stepping up, Jair Hill, DJ Waller. So I'm excited to see what they do, and they're, they're finishing off spring well. Most important thing, is the maze going to pull this game off or what? Definitely. You see the scoreboard, got to finish strong. Let's go. My man. <laughs> I love it. Charles. Yes, sir. When you were playing at Michigan, yep. how much was in your mind like, I'm going to help the next generation? Because it's wild for us to stand here and watch a couple decades worth of Michigan corners down there talking together. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that's really what it's all about. I mean, you, you go through it, you know, on your on your own terms, you know, when you're a young player and you have guys that you look up to and guys that you learn from. You know, I learned from Ty Law. You know, I used to talk to him all the time when I got into the league. And, and so the same with me is, is when you leave, you know, anytime you guys have anything on their mind, man, that they want to ask you or talk to you about, you just try to do that for them. And, and so you know, for me to be here and, and talk to, to Will, who, who's wearing the number two, you know, and goes out there and performs every week. He's one of the best in the game. You know, anything that he needs from me, man, I'll be there for him in a heartbeat. We hear the word brotherhood. There it is. Fourth down and one. They gave the sack a couple plays ago. Fourth and one. Last gasp here. Nice little slide by, and he's going to waltz in. It's a touchdown. The second. They're about to call it back. Testing. He touched him. Are they going to say sack here? Oh, wow. Look at him. He's, he's calling him down right here. He gives no love to the old line. He calls him down. <laughs> I, I don't they know. They're going I for the know, stakes. May said they're going for the stakes. <laughs> Coach, I think he might. Hey. I, I think he might walk to, walk through that tackle there. Uh, I don't know. I saw a free runner. So I had, to, I had to call that one. Back. He blows. He blows it dead right there. That's going to be a maze. A maze win, Charles. Hey, you see why I came over to the maze side? It stinks tonight. I was going to say you were on the blue side earlier. <laughs> hey man, when you got a gold jacket and a Heisman Trophy, you always eat steak. Hey, I did go to Michigan, baby. We smart. We That's know. What, right. We know what to do. Hey, they're going to blame they're going to blame Bennett for that because he hit him a couple plays ago. He's going to say, well, I blew it dead because I don't want him getting hit again. That's right. It looked like it looked like he was limping a little bit there, huh? Maybe kind of had a little bit of a hitch on the way to the end zone. Orgy, I didn't see that from from field level. Well, he's going to want his touchdown. We know that for sure. Dunlap, tailback. Should be it. They got one timeout. The two minute warning is already gone by, so they're going to use the timeout. But uh, Mays is going to be eating steak, it looks like, as you guys said downstairs. Joel, we talked off the top about position battles and depth. Who stood out to you today? Well, there's a few. We've, we've mentioned a few of them, and, and I'm going to echo what Coach said, but Zeke Berry early in the game was flying around. And, and that's an important position, right? Because that's where Mikey Sainer still was so impactful for this defense so obviously him you know there's some that are just going to be you, you're going to almost take for granted I know Will Johnson's going to stand out and, and I know that Donovan Edwards is going to stand out and Kenneth Grant Mason Graham but what you want is those players that you don't know of where do they go Zeke Berry would have been one of those for me yeah for me I mean 
I looked at the young quarterback, the young freshman quarterback. He made a couple of throws out there today. One thrown back across the field, and then the one scramble where the receiver had the ball but uh, wasn't able to, to, to control it going out of bounds. But that was a really great poised uh, decision that he made throwing the ball. And then Warren. Warren yeah. made a couple of throws off of his back foot. Touchdown. He made the big play uh, um, to, to Moore uh, running the little hitch route and, and for a touchdown. So these two young quarterbacks, man, they, they did some things, man. They can turn the head coach's eye. I thought Alex Orgy had a great day, too. Yeah. I mean, him and Davis Warren looked to be neck and neck in this competition. But Orgy did some great things operationally, led a few long drives, did some things with his feet. Another guy in that secondary was D.J. Waller that stood out. Guy that we heard a ton about. Zeke Berry would be the guy that comes to mind right away. But D.J. Waller was in on the action, made a few plays in the passing game, came up and was a sure tackler. He stood out to me. 17-7 you score the Mays team is going to put this away Warren six for nine 136 yards two touchdowns orgy 13 for 18 103 and don't forget if you want more football in your life we have regional action tonight the United Football League continues the Michigan Panthers against the San Antonio Brahmas or DC and Birmingham check your local listings for the game in your yeah. area uh, that's how it is when you when you're a champion champion everything's easier <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Victory formation in a spring game. It's got to feel good, right? Hey, there's stuff on the line. You yep. gotta, you gotta take the win where you can get it. So, Davis Warren and the Mays team will get a victory. 17-7. Your final score. Jenny, you're with Coach Moore, right? Well, what he just said was that was fun, and it was, and it.